This launch is very significant for Kenya, uh, Kenya Space Agency and Kenya as a country because it signifies an advancement in, uh, in science and to be specific in space science. And to be able to put a satellite up in space means you've done a lot of planning, you've involved different sectors and professionals to be able to design a satellite and produce it as you might see in the uh, information on how the satellite was uh, produced. Uh, and collaborating with the international actors who put the space, uh, the satellite on space. That means it affects a lot of uh, fields in terms of research, science, technology, and international collaboration in, on space matters. Uh, this is very significant because it's just the beginning. There are a lot more launches that will come up after this that will enhance the capabilities of future satellites. And for the region, it means that uh, for Eastern Africa, how satellites collect information is that they collect information at a global level, national level, or uh, in parts so that they're able to collect more information that Ke than Kenya needs or boundaries of Kenya. That means neighboring states or other African states can benefit from such data and information. That starts a new uh, space collaboration in this region uh, in terms of information and data sharing. And also it might see that in future we might have regional designed satellites or African designed satellites that will benefit uh, more countries. So it's very significant in terms of space advancement for both the, the, the research and the data users. The concrete benefits that already have been proven uh, are a lot in the line of agriculture monitoring disaster monitoring, flood monitoring, which uh, IGAD is really active in, and routes monitoring. By monitoring means you're able to look at the same point of uh, time and compare with what you had in the past. And that way you are you're able to detect certain indicators that show you uh, act, uh, act as early warning information on important subject matter that you want to monitor and develop early warning information for. Uh, for example, you want to tell that a drought is developing well in advance. You want to tell that an extreme event like floods that have been in the increase in our region uh, is uh, uh, developing and you want to give information of where it is developing, the intensity of such activities, and give the decision maker lead time information such that they are able to act in time. So that's one very uh, demonstrable evidence that uh, Earth Observation has had in, in the world. Uh, in the same way, there's a lot of applications in food security. Uh, for this region, we're just emerging from a drought uh, where a, a big number of the region, for example, 5 million people in Somalia needed some form of uh, food security and support. Uh, same case applies to Kenya and Ethiopia in different magnitudes. You want to be able to tell droughts developing even before uh, they are able, uh, they, are, they, are, they manifest on the ground. This, this shows that you've been able to monitor soil moisture, you've been able to monitor vegetation, uh, and you can tell already the signs, uh, that there are signs that, uh, the indicators that it's developing not in the right trajectory. So that way you're able to develop lead information, sometimes it's six months, three months, one month, and you're able to tell decision makers and the planners what they need to do in advance. Uh, Kenya is, is now developing its uh, national adaptation plan, uh, updating it. There was one already developed, it's, the, uh, it's now updating the na national adaptation plans to climate change. In doing so, the Kenya needs evidence that uh, certain uh, indicators uh, of climate change are, I mean, you need evidence to show that there are certain parameters that are changing in terms of temperatures, uh, rivers are reducing, lakes are increasing or reducing, uh, whichever the drivers. And by so, such a, a satellite can be able to collect data that can be used to support the national adaptation plans and also mitigation activities. Where do you prioritize activities to mitigate the impacts of climate change? Where is it most affected by drought? Where is it most affected by floods? And having such, such a satellite in orbit and collecting information, you can be able to periodically monitor. You can be able to uh, in, intersect it with a, 
uh, projections, future projections, and come up with hotspots and uh, where first to uh, prioritize mitigation measures. So that's how these, such a satellite can help in um, national adaptation plans to climate change.